I've got a question. And this is the question, what's the greatest danger? I wonder what you would consider to be the greatest danger. You know, people would have different answers. Some people might say war is the greatest danger. And war is certainly a terrible thing. It's an awful thing to experience war. Maybe you might say terrorism. And again, terrorism, that is an awful thing. That is a great danger. Then others, and of course bearing in mind the recent pandemic, many people would say disease. And we certainly, when we think of COVID-19, what a disaster it has been for the world. The many, many countless lives that have been lost. People who have had it and recovered, but their health has been affected in a very serious way. Businesses have been destroyed. People have lost their jobs. Yes, disease it is. A great danger. And these are great dangers. Maybe it might be other things that you'd think of. But you know, none of these things are the greatest danger. I wonder what is the greatest danger. But the answer may surprise you. And it is this. Leaving this life not right with God. That is the greatest danger. What is it to leave life not right with God? You know, one day we're all going to die. One day our heart's going to beat for the last time. We're going to take our last breath. But what is it to leave life not right with God? It means it is to die in our sins. It is to die as an unforgiven sinner. It is to go to meet God in judgment. You see, death is not the end. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And the Bible tells us that God is holy, that he is pure, that he is perfectly just. And the problem is, we are sinners. And how can we stand before a holy God? God will not allow sin into his holy heaven. And if we die in our sins, if we die and we're not right with God, then we go to face God's judgment. We go to that place called hell. We go to face a lost eternity, that place of eternal sorrow and regret. You know, this is why Jesus said, What should it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, the soul... We all have a soul, it's the most precious, valuable thing that you and I have because our soul goes on for all eternity. You know, the problem that every one of us has is a three letter word, it's called sin. And you see, it's sin which separates us from God. It's sin which prevents us from having that relationship with God until our problem of sin has been dealt with. It is sin which will keep us out of heaven. And you know, we can only be right with God. We can only go to heaven if our problem of sin has been dealt with. You may think, well, I'm not too bad a person. I'm quite a good person. I'm not as bad as other people. But you know, it's not how we compare ourselves to other people. How do we measure up to a mighty God, the one who is totally perfect? You see, God's standard is total perfection. Bible says this, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves. We may deceive others and but often we don't deceive others. Often other people know what we're really like. But we certainly don't deceive God. We can't pull the wool over God's eyes. You see, God knows everything. The Bible says this, that all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account and then there's a little verse in the bible which says this be sure your sin will find you out you see we've all got that problem of sin we've all done wrong we've all fallen short of god's standard and to be able to be right with god we need to have that problem of sin dealt with how can we get that problem of sin dealt with is it through religion is it if i try and do my best and hopefully the good deeds will outweigh the bad deeds. Well, I have to tell you that none of that will work. The Bible says this, that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. 
In the sight of a God who is holy, even the good things that we do, they're just like filthy rags. They can never make us right with God. So what is the answer? There's only one way that we can be made right with God, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what the good news of the Bible is. And here's a verse, a lovely verse in the Bible. It says this, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he left the glory of heaven for you and me. He gave up everything. He came into this broken world. He lived that perfect life which you and I could never live. And because he lived that perfect life, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was qualified to make payment for our sins, to take the punishment in the place of guilty sinners. And how did the Lord Jesus Christ do that? When he went to the cross, he died upon the cross. That's the reason why he came. When he died upon that cross, he was taking the punishment in the place of guilty sinners. So that all who prepare to own up to their sin, to acknowledge their problem of sin, to turn from their sin, and put their confidence and faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Saviour and Lord, they can know what it is to be forgiven, to be made right with God. You see, when we trust Christ as our Saviour and turn to Him, when we become a real Christian, when we're born again. The Lord Jesus Christ, he takes our sin from us. He takes it upon himself. And instead, he gives us his righteousness. So that when God looks on us, he sees us clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And so if we're prepared to repent of our sin and put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can know what it is to be right with God. And we can know this promise in the Bible it says this, if we confess our sins, he will forgive us and cleanse us. And so I challenge you, are you right with God? You know, that is the most important issue that faces every single human being. If this was your last day on planet Earth, would you be confident of standing before God? Would you know in your heart that you're right with God? You know, we'd urge you to do that. The Bible says this, now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Don't put it off and think I've got plenty of time. Make sure that you're right with God. You know, with this picture leaving, not right with God. We've got a picture of a coffin. It reminds me with a driver at the box junction. You don't go in the box junction, do you? Generally, unless your exit is clear. And I'd say to you, make sure you don't go in the box, in the coffin, unless you know that you're right with God, unless you know that you're on your way to heaven.